I welcome you all in this course on steam and gas power systems. Today we will solve numericals on uh, impulse turbine. Uh, this is first numerical which states that for a single stage 3000 rpm impulse turbine. So, there is an impulse turbine with rpm is equal to 3000. The mean diameter of the blade is 105 centimeters. So, the diameter is 105 centimeter. In turbines, <laughs> the blades are fixed on the surface of the rotor. If you look at the end view, the blades will look like this. When the steam is flowing perpendicular to the direction of this board. Now, if you look at here, why it is stated that the mean blade diameter? Because this rotor is moving with certain speed that is 3000 rpm, right. So, when we are moving in radial direction, the peripheral velocity is changing. In velocity diagrams, if you look at, we have always considered mean diameter, but in actual practice, this u is changing when you are moving along the radius of the rotor or if we draw a velocity diagram for impulse turbine, this is absolute velocity v 1 blade inlet angle sorry nozzle inlet angle, this is blade inlet angle u, this is relative velocity at the entry. Now, here this is blade outlet angle nozzle outlet angle, this is relative velocity at the exit, absolute velocity that is it. So, when the u changes, this is u peripheral velocity, when there is a change in u, the diagram will change. So, in fact, we are going to have different velocity diagrams for different positions, right? that is one thing. So, the calculations are done for a, an average value of the diameter that is this if this is d 1 and this is d 2 then average is going to be d 1 plus d 2 by 2. Now, if we change the u suppose u is increased if we change the u same inlet velocity and blade inlet angle sorry the nozzle inlet angle the blade angle will change it means when we are moving in this direction, the blade inlet outlet angles will be altered. That is why the blades of the turbine are twisted. The blades of the turbines are twisted because we have to ensure that steam should glide over the blades, it should not strike the blades. When the blade angle is changing, in that case we will have to twist or this blades have to be twisted in order to ensure that there is a no shock entry or the steam simply glides over the blade surface, which is prime requirement of a uh, impulse turbine, right. So, here the mean blade speed is given 105 centimeters, the nozzle angle is 20 that is nozzle inlet angle alpha 1 is 20 degree, the ratio of blade speed to steam, steam speed is steam speed means v 1. So, this rho is 0 0.45, rho is nothing but u by v 1, so it is 0 0.45 ok and the ratio of the relative velocity at outlet from the blades to the inlet is 0 0.85, it means v r 2 by v r 1 is equal to 0 0.85. The outlet angle of the blade is 3 degree less than the inlet angle. The mass flow rate of so outlet angle beta 2 is equal to beta 1 minus 3. The mass flow rate of steam is 7 kg per second. So, mass flow rate is 7 kg per second. Draw the velocity diagram for the blade and find. So, first of all in this case we have to draw the velocity diagram. Now, first of all with the help of these two informations, we will calculate the average peripheral velocity. So, u is equal to 
pi d n over 60. 60 we have taken because this is rpm. So, this rpm is converted into rounds per second. So, it is going to be pi into 105 divided by 100 converting into meter into 3000 divided by 60 and u is going to be equal to 164.9 meters per second. So, this is the value of u, u is equal to, we will put here, u is equal to because we will be frequently needing this information. So, I am noting it down here 164.9 meters per second. This is the value of u. So, in a velocity diagram, we can always draw u and direction of u is this. Now, blade inlet angle is sorry, this nozzle inlet angle is 20 degree. At 20 degree, a line will be drawn and the length of this line is equivalent to v 1, v 1 is not given, okay. v 1 is not given, but we have the value of rho, rho is equal to u by v 1. So, v 1 is equal to rho by, so, sorry, u by rho is equal to u by rho and that is 164.9 divided by 0 0.45. 164.9 divided by 0.45. It is 366.4 meters per second. So, u v 1 also we can note it down 366.4 meters per second. Now, we have the value of absolute velocity of steam which is entering the plate this is nozzle inlet angle alpha 1 and alpha 1 is given here 20 degree. Twenty degree. So, now geometrically we can draw this triangle because we have the value of u, u is 164.9 and this v 1 is equal to 366.4 meters per second. So, definitely we can draw geometrically we can draw this triangle, but normally we prefer analytical solutions because analytical solutions are more correct. In geometrical solutions the values are not that correct because we have to scale down, we have to take a uniform value of x for v 1 and u and then draw a triangle. So, it, there is a possibility of uh, error incurring the results. So, now this is v r 1. Right. So, in order to find the beta 1, in order to find beta 1, we can always take sorry, v 1 is equal to 366.4. Now, this is x and this is y. So, x is equal to v 1 cos alpha 1 minus u v 1 projection in this direction minus u is going to give you x and y is equal to v 1 sin alpha 1. We know we have all the values, we have value of v 1, we have a value of alpha 1, we have value of u. So, tan beta 1 this is blade inlet angle is v 1 sin alpha 1 divided by v 1 cos alpha 1 minus u. Now, we will put the values v 1 is 366.4 sin 20 divided by 366.4 cos 20 minus 164.9. Now, if you solve this, you are going to get 10 beta 1 is 0 0.6985 and this gives the value of beta 1 as 34.9 degree. So, now we have the value of beta 1 also, right. Once we have the value of beta 1, we can always have the value of beta 2. Beta 2 is beta 1 minus 3 degree. So, it is going to be 31.9 degree. Now, we have found the value of 
beta 2 as well, but we do not know the value of v 2 and v r 2, right. But we have the constant this uh, v r 2 by v r 1 as 0 0.85, but for this purpose we need the value of v r 1. Now, v r 1 can be taken from here because we know the value of x, we know the value of y. So, v r 1 is equal square is equal to v 1 cos alpha 1 minus u whole square plus v 1 sin alpha 1 whole square right and <coughs> this will give now v 1 is 366.4 minus u is 164.9 sorry cos 20 minus 164.9 whole square plus 366.4 sin 20 whole square. Now, this 366.4 this 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 one will give 125.3 whole square plus 179.4 whole square because this is a right hand triangle so this square is equal to this square plus this square right and then we get v r 1 square is equal to <coughs> 218.8 meter per second and here also because v 1 is greater than v r 1 we can see from here also and numerically also we are getting v r 1 as 218.8 meter per second. So, v r 1 is 218.8 meters per second. Now, once we have the value of v r 1 and this <coughs> uh, the ratio the relative velocity at outlet from the blades to the inlet of the blades v r 2 by v r 1 is 0.85. So, v r 2 is equal to 0 0.85 v r 1. So, v r 2 is equal to 0 0.85 multiplied by v r 1 that is 218.8. 218.8 and we will get the value of relative velocity at 2 is 186 meters per second right. Now, we have blade outlet angle here blade outlet angle sorry blade outlet angle come here. So, blade outlet angle is 31.9 right. So, we know the direction of relative velocity of steam which is leaving the blades and we know the magnitude as well v r 2. So, this beta 2 uh, this is 31.9 this is beta 2 is equal to 31.9 and 186 this is the value of v r 2. We can draw this line once we have this line we can definitely complete the triangle we can complete the triangle. And as we have found the value of if it is required then as we have found the value of v r 1 we can find the value of v 2. Say v 2 square is equal to v r 2 square cos beta 2 minus u sorry v r 2 square v r 2 cos beta 2 minus u whole square plus uh, v r 2 sin beta 2 whole square and from here we can because we have the value of v r 2 we have the value of beta 2 cos beta 2 u is also with us. So, we can easily find the value of or geometrically also we can do that we will be getting the same result. Now, what is required here because now we have complete now we can draw the velocity triangle which is the first requirement for any numerical in steam turbines. Now, what is required here tangential thrust on the blade in order to find tangential thrust on the blade 
we have to find the vril velocity. Now, vril velocity of the flow, vril velocity is this one, this is vril velocity, right. Now, vril velocity can be expressed either uh, like the v w is equal to v 1 cos alpha 1 plus v 2 cos alpha 2, this is alpha 2. So, alpha t we have not calculated alpha 2, we have not calculated v 2 yet, but we can always find the value of v 2 and on alpha 2 with the help of the available information. Okay. So, the vril velocity is v 1 cos alpha 1, this is alpha 1 plus v 2 cos alpha 2 or v w is equal to v r 1 cos beta 1 plus v r 2 cos beta 2. This is simple trigonometry. <coughs> v r 1 is this relative velocity at inlet plus beta 1 this, this length plus v r 2 cos beta 2 this length. So, if information let us see whether information regarding this is available with us, we have already calculated v r 1, beta 1 is also with us, v r 2 we have calculated, we have calculated v r 2 is 0.85 times v r 1. So, v r 2 is equal to we have calculated v r 2, we are two. it is 186 meters per second. So, v r 2 is equal to k v r 1 and k is 0 0.85 and v r 1 is 218.8. So, from here we got the value of v r 2. So, v r 2 is also with us and cos beta 2 is also with us. So, in fact, we have all the information. Now, we will calculate v w. So, v r 1 is 218.8 cos 34.9 plus v r 2 186 cos 31.9 and this gives the value of v w as 337.4 meters per second. We will note it down here v w is equal to 337.4 meters per second. This is real component of the velocity. Now, tangential thrust on the blade force, force is uh, on the thrust of the blade is force is equal to mass flow rate multiplied by uh, Vw. Mass flow rate is 7 multiplied by 337.4 this will give, this will be in Newtons, right. <laughs> if you divide this by 1000, it will become kilo Newtons and this is 389.46 kilo Newtons. So, force here we can write. So, first answer is tangential thrust on the blade F is equal to 389.46 kilo Newton. Now, second one is axial thrust on the blades. Now, axial thrust on the blades is perpendicular to this. It means this y minus this y. Again, in order to find axial thrust on the blade, we can take uh, axial thrust on the blade mass flow rate and v 1 sin alpha 1, this is this one minus we can take v r 2 sin beta 2 or we can take similar fraction, we can take v r 1 sin beta 1 minus v r 2 sin beta 2 sorry, uh, yes v r 1 sin beta 1 minus v r 2 sin beta 2 can also be taken because this is v r 1 sin beta 1 
minus V R two sin beta two, right? We can take either of these. So V R sin beta one minus V R two sin beta two. Now we here we have the value of V R one with us. We have value of V R two sin beta one sin beta two values are also with us, right? Because <coughs> Uh, mass flow rate is also given, and this will give the axial thrust as if we are putting the values and solving this, we will be getting the axial thrust as 188.9 newtons. Right? This is the axial thrust. Axial thrust means the when the when the shaft is rotating, then force working perpendicular to, sorry, the parallel to the axis of the shaft. That is known as axial thrust. So, axial thrust is 188.9 newtons. Now, after axial thrust, now second is power developed in the blade. So, power is Vwu by 1000. This is the force multiplied by the velocity, so at multiplied by mass flow rate. So, Vw is given. So, power is mass flow rate is 7, Vw is 337.4 multiplied by u peripheral velocity, we have calculated 164.9 divided by 1000. Okay. And this gives the power as 389.46 kilowatt. Right. So, <laughs> we are getting uh, power also. Now, blade efficiency. Blade efficiency is 2 V w u by V 1 square. It is the blade or diagram efficiency. Now, V w is with us. So, 2 into 337.4 into u 164.9 divided by V 1, we have it is given here 366.9, sorry 366.4, 366.4 and this will give the blade or diagram efficiency 0, 0 0.829. If you multiply this by 100, this is 82.9 percent and the last one is resultant thrust on the blades. Now, resultant thrust, we have virile component, we have axial component okay? and they are perpendicular to each other. So, net thrust, net thrust will be, now we have the value of V 2, we can calculate the value of F x, we have already, and uh, we can calculate the uh, uh, will, uh, uh, force, will force that is mass into V w and F x is mass flow rate, this is already calculated. So, this is already calculated, it is 188.9 Newton and F w and F x, the net resultant force is F w square plus F x square. Now, this will give the resultant force acting on the blades. After this, we will take up another numerical which states that steam flows from the nozzle of a single row impulse turbine with a velocity 400 meters per second and 15 degree nozzle inlet angle. Steam at 5 kg per centimeter kg per second comes out of the equiangular moving, equiangular means inlet blade angle is equal to outlet blade angle. So, beta 1 is equal to beta 2 with an absolute velocity of 80 meters per second. So, absolute velocity at the exit is also given with a nozzle outlet angle of 60 degree. So, in this case <laughs> inlet and outlet informations are giving given, find the power developed and the loss due to friction. So, here in this case V 1 is given, V 1 is 400 meters per second and alpha 1 is also given is 15 degree, steam at 5 kg per second. So, mass flow rate is also given 5 kgs per second comes out of the equilateral moving blades with an absolute velocity of 80 meters per second. So, V 2 is equal to 80 and equiangular. So, beta 1 is equal to beta 2. 
nozzle outlet angle is 60 degree. So, alpha 2 is also given 60 degree. Find the power developed and loss due to friction. Here, u is not given in this case. So, analytically we will have to find the u. So, first of all, we will draw the tentative uh, velocity diagram and that is v 1, v r 1, u, this is beta 1, this is beta 2, alpha 1, alpha 2, v r 2 and v 2, right. Now, here tan beta 1. Now, tan beta 1 is, we have the value of v 1. Okay, but we do not have the value of, so we have a value of alpha 1 also. So, it is <coughs> v 1 sin alpha 1 divided by this, this one y, y divided by x that will give tan beta 1. So, x is v 1 sin alpha 1 minus u. Now, v 1 is given 400 meters per second, sin alpha 1 is 20. Sorry, yes, this is cos, not sin. And then 400 cos 20 minus u. u is not known to us. Now, for beta 2, for beta 2, tan beta 2 is equal to v 2 sin alpha 2. This is again, this is suppose this is y 1 1, this is x 2 and y 2. So, tan beta 2 is v 2 sin alpha 2 or v r 2 sin beta 2 minus u, either of these you can take. But since we have the value of v 2, 80 meters per second and we have the value of alpha 2 also. So, it is easy to find the value of y 2 and then x 2 is uh, v 2 cos alpha 2 plus u, right. We have all the values. We have the value of v 2 is 80 sin 60 divided by 80 cos 60 plus u. Now, this one is equal to this one because we have said that they are equiangular blades. And out of this, if we make this equal to this, the only unknown is u. And from here, we can get the value of u and the value of u is coming out as 131 meters per second, right. Once we have calculated the value of u, then other values will automatically come out. For example, wind velocity v w wind velocity is going to be 400 cos alpha 1 plus this 80 cos alpha 2. Alpha 2 is also known to us. So, it is going to be 400 we can write sorry we can write here v 1 and v 2. So, it is 400 cos alpha 1 plus 80 cos 60, right. This will give the wheel velocity and this is going to be equal to v w, we will write here v w is equal to 426.4 meters per second, right. Now, power, power is mass flow rate v w u uh, divided by 1000. V w is with us, u is also with us, mass flow rate is given here 5 kg per second, 5 kg per second. So, 5 kg per second multiplied by 426.4 multiplied by 131 divided by 1000 and this will give power as <coughs> 279.3 kilowatts. Now, the second part find power developed and loss due to friction. 
Now, loss due to friction is change in relative velocity, it can be found through change in uh, relative velocity uh, q f or power friction sorry, power friction mass flow rate v r 1 square minus v r 2 square uh, divided by 2 into 1000, right. Now, we have the value of v 1, we do not have the value of v r 1, but v r 1 we can easily calculate. V r 1 square is equal to v 1 square plus u square minus 2 cos sorry, u v 1 cos alpha 1. This will give us the value of v r 1. Now, v r 2 is also not with us. Similarly, we can find the value of v r 2. Right, And then once we have the value of v r 1 and v r 2 or this is one way, another way is another way is this is one way, another way is v r 1 square is equal to v 1 sin alpha 1 square plus v 1 cos alpha 1 minus u, it is more of the same thing. Right. So, this from here we can get the v r 1 and v r 2 as well. Once we have the value of v r and v r 1 and v r 2, we will be putting here, then power will become 5 times 275 square minus 184 point 184 square divided by 2 into 1000 and the power friction power is going to be 103.96 kilowatt. So, this is how the friction power loss due to friction is calculated. That is all for today and from the next class we will start with the impulse reaction turbines.